St. Timothy Lutheran Church. Today is the celebration of the Holy Trinity. We reflect on how God comes to us, revealed as loving Father, as incarnate Son of God, our brother Jesus, and as God's living, loving Spirit in the world and in ourselves. But as we begin, I must say another word to you. Peace. Peace be with you. I say that word again. Peace be with you. I speak this word to you because there's been so much violence and unrest in our land this past week, burning and violence on the streets of our cities that reached even our own community, and we hunger for peace. But I also say this word to you because it is Jesus' word to his disciples. After Jesus was crucified, his disciples were confused and sad, afraid. They didn't know what was going to happen to them and they had no idea what to do. And amid their sadness, their fear, and their confusion, Jesus came among them and said, Peace. Peace be with you. So I say that to you. Peace be with you. Make that word your prayer. Say it when you rise. Say it when you lay down. Say it as you're preparing a meal or doing the dishes or taking a break in your work. Say it when you see the news and the news is disturbing. Say the word. Make it your mantra. Peace. For Jesus' peace is not the absence of struggle, but the presence of a love that never lets go never lets us down, and will never abandon us. Peace to you, my brothers and sisters. And that peace was first spoken to you and to me personally in the waters of our baptism. So let us give thanks for the waters of baptism where Jesus names us his own sons and daughters, washes us and makes us new. We begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. We give thanks for the waters of baptism. O Lord, we do give you thanks. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world. You called forth life in which you take delight. 
Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into the freedom of the promised land. At the river Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as your sons and daughters, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains us and all life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us today with your spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you, be given honor and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe, before the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us, we pray, to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy spirit you are Your glory, God, is what I 
It's time for the children's sermon. And I've been, I've been wondering about you. I've been wondering if, if maybe you've been scared or maybe just afraid and upset. Because you see, I, I heard about one little boy from St. Timothy, our congregation. And he was scared and upset because, because he heard police sirens and fire trucks and then a helicopter up in the sky at night. And he looked to his mom and his dad for comfort, wondering, is it going to be all right? What's happening? He wasn't sure and he was scared. And they had to comfort him. Well, I want you to do something. I want you to look right in my eyes because I'm going to tell you it's going to be all right. It really is. It's going to be all right. But you need to know something. You need to know that there, there's people in the world that are so terribly angry or troubled or sick that they do things that hurt other people and they take things and break things that don't belong to them. That happens. But you and I, we know what to do when we're afraid or we're angry or upset. We, we tell somebody else, somebody who loves us, somebody who can help us. You can tell your mom, your dad, maybe you've got an older brother or older sister that you know loves you very much. They are all there to help you and comfort you and be your helpers. Now, there was a very wise man, used to be on TV, and he was a pastor. And he used to say, when really bad things happen, it's important to look for the helpers because they're here, there to take care of you and help you. So when you get scared, look, look for the helpers. And if you see bad things on TV, you might also look, are there other people doing helpful things to take care of people when they're hurt or scared, afraid? Do you know who those people are, those helpers? They're the friends of Jesus. They're Jesus' hands and Jesus' heart. They're Jesus' love and his care. That's who they are, the friends of Jesus, because they have God's loving spirit inside of them. And that's what moves them to be helpers. So if you see mom or dad kind of upset or angry about things that are happening, no, it's not your fault. There's just other things happening. And if you get scared, you talk to them and you let them help you. Always look for the helpers. And when you find them, I want you to do one more thing. I want you to say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for the helpers because I know they are your friends. Remember that always. The Gospel today is from the 28th chapter of Matthew. The 11 disciples went to the hill in Galilee where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him even though some of them doubted. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I will be with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Some sermons you just got to come out and immediately say what you are thinking. Sometimes you need to get right to the point. Sometimes you need to keep it simple and straightforward so that the take home message, the main theme, the thesis statement doesn't get lost in a, a funny story or some pithy remark as I'm sometimes wont to do. That's what Jesus did in his final sermon to his disciples as we find it in the last six verses of the Gospel of Matthew, and it's, 
It's what I'm going to do today as well. As Jesus stood before the disciples, commissioning them, he told them to go. Go to people. For life is better together, and he wanted his followers with the people of all nations. And he gave them instructions, and he gave them words of comfort to take with them for the journey. For he knew that while life is better together, it's oftentimes very hard. That's really my sermon today, too. That life is better together, but oftentimes that togetherness is the same thing that makes life hard. We've seen that played out time and time again this year. 2020 seems to be the year that we learn this fact all too well. When Jesus says life is better together, we look around and we see a pandemic that has raged and we know that just how hard that togetherness can be when being close to someone, even someone we love, can transmit a deadly disease. Even still, our hearts yearn for community and connection. And we have found ways to safely be together. And we work slowly toward a day when we released from face masks and, and physical distancing may embrace each other once more. For we know that life is better together, even when it's hard. That's what Jesus tells us. Recent days have stretched our ability to believe these words of Jesus. At least the first part, that life is better together. For we have seen just how hard life together can be. We have seen how life together brings out our tendencies as humans sometimes to be unkind, prejudiced, and even violent towards people who we think are different than ourselves. America, more than any other nation, seems to struggle with this paradox of celebrating a life together and yet making it so hard. Take the humble dollar bill, for instance. On its seal, we read the words, E pluribus unum, from many into one. And yet, we often hold this piece of paper in higher regard than we do the values that are printed on it. In God we trust, it says, and yet if, if Jesus was to preach as he did in Galilee about caring for the poor and the downtrodden and building up the kingdom of God instead of our earthly kingdom, we'd probably crucify him too. We are a country entirely made up of, of immigrants from all parts and nations of the world. A true picture of Christ's command to the disciples to go to all nations. An example that this life is meant to be spent together. And yet our bigotry toward one another and suspicion of differences causes us to hate the very thing that makes us great. That makes us who we are. And yet Jesus calls us together. Jesus calls us together as Jesus called the disciples to go to all nations. And when he did so, Jesus did not leave them and did not leave us without guidance. Even when things get tough. And words of comfort. Even when we can't take the pain and exhaustion anymore. And the guidance part is this. Christ tells his disciples and tells us too that when we approach other people, that we're supposed to clothe them with the waters of God's love, the waters of baptism, whose sacramental power overcomes the divisions of this world as we are adopted as co-equal sons and daughters of our triune God. We are to teach and model what it means to live as Jesus did. Not curved in on ourselves, but with an eye to the needs of those who are hurting and in need of forgiveness, love, 
and grace. And the comfort part that Jesus talks about is this. Lest we think that Jesus sends us out to change the world all alone. On this day and every day, we are reminded as people of faith that we are not in this alone. Even when we are apart, even when things are falling apart, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all one, all three, all holy, almighty, all good, all just, all loving, all eternal, is with us in all places and in all ages. God walks beside those who grieve, who grieve a loved one who is killed because of racial violence, like the family and friends of George Floyd. For God reminds us that Jesus died unjustly too. God's peace descends like a dove upon the police officer who works in hazardous conditions for the common good and who stands beside those they are called to protect. God sends compassion and perseverance to those whose hearts are moved to clean up streets and make way for a better tomorrow. For our resurrection, faith knows that death and destruction is never the final word. God's Spirit dries the tears of the frustrated who no longer want to live in an unjust world. For God promises that it is the peacemaker, the poor, the weeping, and the oppressed who are truly blessed. And to those who would continue to harbor ill will will towards people of any race or kind or, or those who would use this time of unrest as a moment of selfish gain or as a call to more violence, we continue to live the life that Jesus lived, teaching the lessons that Jesus taught, praying the prayers that Jesus prayed, that all may be one and that the kingdom of God may come to be on earth as it is in heaven. And finally, even though it is hard now, we will not stop, if need be, until the end of this age or any age. Never stop living the love of Christ. For life is better together. Amen.
called into unity with one another and with the whole creation. Let us pray for our church, our world, and all who are in need. Triune God, you form us as your church. Just as you are three in one, you call us together. You call us from the ends of the earth in every time and every age. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation of the gospel. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend, attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all who seek peace and justice. God of mercy, God of creation, you called everything into being. We give you thanks for the sun that shines, for the rain that cools, for the birds of the air, and for new life that bursts forth in this growing season. God of mercy. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land. Let us promote peace, seek equality, and demand unity. Instill wisdom in all who advocate towards justice and towards the good of all. We pray for the downtrodden. Lift up all who are in need in this and every land. God of mercy. O Holy One, you are a great physician. You come to us when we are in need. You comfort the ailing. You give healing to the sick. We pray this day for the world as it ails, that you may heal the virus that rages, that you may bring comfort to those who are dying, that you may heal those who are sick. Especially this day, we pray for your healing touch upon Vera Berggren and Kathy and Bob Borg, for Larry and Tony Hansler, for Becky Mansour, for Bill and Eleanor Mashik, for Sharon Reed and Sherry Stutzman, God of mercy. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. And we give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us, especially this day. We pray for the soul of Joni Haywood, God of mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and for those prayers that lie in the silence of our hearts, those prayers that are too deep for words. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Holy Communion, our Lord Jesus Christ gives his body and blood in the elements of bread and wine. We receive these elements with open hands and believing hearts, trusting those words spoken to each of us. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. As you hear the words, hear them spoken to you that you may come into the fullness of the love of Christ for you, a love that never fails. So let us now celebrate the holy meal, the celebration of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Loving God, we do give you thanks. We do give you thanks for all your glory, for all that you have done in creation and salvation. We give you thanks for all of the ways you come and reveal and give yourself to us. You come as the author of all life, as our brother and savior, Jesus the Christ, and as the living, loving spirit that blows among and within us. With all of creation and with all of the hosts of heaven, we praise your name saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. In great love you sent Jesus, your son, our brother, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night, in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. And again after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of a new covenant and my blood shed for you and for all people of every time and place and this for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Pour out the spirit of your love, O Lord. Unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food that is the body and blood of Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit belong all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. Filled with hope for his living and loving presence, filled with hope that his kingdom may appear and bless us even here and now, let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Share with me now the meal of salvation as Christ comes to us through this holy meal. Take and eat, this is the body of Christ which is broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Trust in me and 
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Receive now the Lord's benediction. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. People of God, what are we called to do? Go in peace to love all people in Christ's name. Thanks so much for tuning in to worship today with us. I'm so glad you were able to be with us. So this has been a, a tough week and I think we're hopefully on the other side of it now and just don't lose hope everyone. Keep the faith and just know we are all in this together. Um, you have many, many opportunities, so please be sure and read the Thursday email that Sherry sends out to us because it gives you all kinds of online opportunities to stay connected and see what's happening with St. Tim's as well as just to be together on our ministries. Like our coffee hour, for example, coming up today at 11, so hope you can all be with us for that today. And one other thing. Lindsay Caston will be doing our children's ministry summer program starting on June 16th. So contact Lindsay if you want more information about that or you can read about it on that same page that Sherry sends out to you on Thursdays. So until we get together again next week for worship, take care friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>